Took the afternoon off yesterday again. I don't intend on this becoming a trend, taking every Friday afternoon off. I have just had so much going on during the week, the last couple of weeks. By the time I get to Friday afternoon, I just need a break. So we're going to crank out two videos today. I hope to be able to get one posted tomorrow as well. You can tell... You can tell a lot about the state of a society by what the culture chooses to celebrate, what they choose to promote, their identity. Japanese culture, rich with tradition, respect for your elders. In Mexico, they celebrate Cinco de Mayo, they celebrate Easter, they celebrate Christmas. When most Americans think about Mexico, they think of drug cartels and the violence that comes along with that business. But a lot of Mexicans are very, very religious. Over in England, they celebrate the royal family and the hundreds of years of tradition behind it. Here in America, we used to be able to put our differences aside to come together and celebrate, whether that be at major sporting events like the Super Bowl or the World Series, holidays like Christmas or the 4th of July, commemorating 9-11. According to Woke Logic, we are no longer allowed to have those celebrations. Everything we love and enjoy is under attack. Every year, Shit fucks attempt to spread their misery during Christmas and Thanksgiving. Fourth of July is labeled a racist holiday. They try to turn Easter into a celebration of Megan Rapino, America's favorite Easter egg. Back in June, normal people sat back and endured an entire fucking month watching some of the filthiest people ever created celebrate woke Christmas. Men dressed as women were throwing out the first pitch at Major League Baseball games. Hell, they even entertained their fans with a drag show at a Milwaukee Brewers game. Teams across all major sports leagues, they dipped their logos in the rainbow. Oh, it was so beautiful. I just love seeing the Braves mascot dipped in the gay gay. Like I told you guys the other day, then we were talking about that rugby team in Australia. 30 days was not enough time for these people to celebrate. An entire month, that wasn't enough. Back when these pride celebrations started decades ago, it started out as a one-day celebration. But just like everything else with Woke United Methodist, one day is not enough. These people always push for more, which is why normal people should never give in to their demands. Pride Day turned into Pride Week. Pride Week turned into Pride Month, also known as Woke Christmas. Pride Month has now spilled over into July. And if people don't start putting their foot down, Pride Day is going to be every day. If you think celebrating Pride is a request, you are sadly mistaken. This is a demand. 100% compliance is the expectation. The vast majority of Americans... We don't give a shit about your sexuality. If Tran Dan wants to marry Tran Fran, great, go for it. If Steve wants to play the butt bongo with Max, go for it. If Megan Rapino and Sue Tweety Bird want to tag team the woke cucumber, oil it up. Most members of the LGBT community are no different than the rest of us. Their men just prefer cucumbers. Straight men like a wet peach. That's really the only difference. But the incessant promotion of pride has very little to do with the LGBT movement. Matter of fact, it has nothing to do with it. Leaders at Woke United Methodist, they use the LGBT community to see how far they can push the boundaries of decency. At the end of the day, it's all about power and control. They use this movement to see if normal people are willing to fight for what they believe in. A couple of months ago, I told you guys about the story of Jaylene Daniels. Jaylene Daniels plays for the North Carolina Courage in the NWSL. She is a rarity in that league, meaning she's an actual woman married to an actual man, and in their marriage, the woman had the baby. There are no birthing persons in this marriage. Her husband does not have the ability to get pregnant. Their relationship, their marriage, it's what, like, it's what the woke like to call outdated. People who like to bang the shovel in the backyard, they don't understand the natural attraction between a man and a woman. You know, you guys see a beautiful woman, you might politely stare for a second, maybe give her a compliment. When you were single, you probably went to bars or the gym to find a woman to be with. Woke shit fucks, they carry out their mating process a bit differently. They carry out their mating process at Home Depot. 
Oh, look at that shovel. Look how long the handle is. I can't contain my desires. It's love at first sight. I'm going to buy my lover, head straight to my shed, and practice the woke love. Several years ago, Jaylene Daniels' childhood dream came true when she was invited to play on the U.S. women's national soccer team. She was excited about it. She was thrilled. She was getting the chance to represent her country on a global stage. Naturally, she expected to be wearing jerseys dipped in the American flag. But Jaylene Daniels never stepped on the field for America. Her dream ended up becoming a nightmare. Why? I'll let her explain it to you herself. When you honestly take a second and like step back and almost have like that outer body experience of just, I'm being invited to play the game I love for my country. There's an emblem of the U.S. flag on your chest. Like, that's huge. Then days before the event, it was announced that the team jersey was designed to honor the LGBT community. Jaylene again turned to God. I just felt so convicted in my spirit that it wasn't my job to wear this jersey. And I gave myself um, three days to just seek and pray and determine what he was asking of me to do in the situation. I'm essentially giving up the, the one dream little girls dream about their entire life. It is no secret that Jaylene Daniels is a devout Christian. The North Carolina Courage, they knew this about her when they signed her back in December. And I will give the club some credit because they received the expected backlash from the Butt Brigade. How dare you sign this birthing person? She's married to a man. She doesn't like cucumbers. She believes a rainbow is God's promise never to flood the earth again instead of something to be worn to show your gay gay pride. Last night, the North Carolina Courage played the Washington Spirit. <laughs> What the hell's with these team names in this fucking league? Why do women's sports leagues feel the need to virtue signal with the team names? But anyway, before the game, North Carolina announced players would be wearing special jerseys. Check it out for yourself. Get rid of those boring jerseys. We are showing off our pride tonight. Taste the rainbow for yourself. The number four represents the amount of cucumbers I can handle for insertion. Obviously, Jaylene Daniels had a serious problem with this. She didn't feel comfortable promoting a lifestyle that she doesn't live and a lifestyle that violates the tenets of her faith. Now, you would think, you would think, with the NWSL being all about diversity and inclusion, that this decision would be accepted, right? I mean, think about it. The NWSL is filled with a bunch of women pretending to be men. Jaylene Daniels is an actual woman who carries herself like an actual woman. That handles the diversity part. If you're really all about inclusion, shouldn't someone with the Christian faith be included? I can't imagine. I cannot imagine there are very many Christians prancing around on an NWSL soccer field. Jaylene Daniels, she chose to sit out the game last night. She took a stand. She refused to wear the pride jersey. Management in North Carolina, they fake surprise and disappointment. We respect her decision, but we are oh so disappointed. Dipping the jerseys in the rainbow, that was not enough. They held a fucking pride festival before a soccer game. This way, all the little children in attendance can also celebrate the pride. It's all about the kids. We must teach our children the proper way to use a crayon. You know, I find it very, very strange. Woke shitfucks, they like to pretend that someone coming out is courageous. There seems to be some confusion, though, about what constitutes as courage. People are no longer afraid to come out anymore because it's accepted. What Jaylene Daniels is doing, that is real courage. But the reaction to her amongst the courage virgins on Twitter was absolutely visceral. Fuck Jaylene Daniels. I hate her. But one particular reaction caught my attention. Check it out for yourself. Shelly Donaldson is supposedly a Christian minister. I just love how this minister informs us of her proper pronouns. As if I didn't know Shelly was a fucking girl name. According to Shelly Donaldson, who I refuse to call Reverend, Jaylene Daniels is a bigot and a hater and is not following the teachings of Jesus. Now, how does she know that? Because Shelly said so. 
Clearly, this shit fuck received her degree in theology from Woke U. At least I hope she did, because if actual Christian schools are giving degrees to birthing people like this, the church in America is in serious trouble. Is it any wonder why the NWSL is struggling? Much like the WNBA, this dump is promoting their product to less than 10% of the population. No wonder average NWSL attendance this season is hovering around 6,000 people a game. Television ratings for the NWSL extremely hard to find. You have a better chance finding reruns of Samford and Son on TV than finding an NWSL game, which is ironic when you think about it. Megan Rapino, according to the mainstream media, Megan Rapino was supposedly this huge soccer star. If you listen to the media, the prepubescent boy is the biggest soccer star in America. But like I told you before, Megan Rapino is not a soccer star. She's a social justice star. Her dump ranks fourth in the NWSL in attendance, averaging just over 6,000 rodents per game. Since 2020, CBS has aired 14 NWSL games, not CBS Sports Network. I'm talking about the real CBS, free television. The prepubescent boy plays for something called the OL Reign. I think OL stands for only lesbians. Jalen Daniels obviously would not be allowed on this team. But check out where the egg ranks in terms of ratings on games broadcast on CBS. The fucking bottom. Ooh, she's so popular. This graph, it doesn't give days or dates, but I would assume that these games aired during the weekend. CBS typically averages between 2 and 6 million viewers during the weekend. Look at these NWSL ratings on CBS. Now granted, they're a hell of a lot better than the WNBA, but that's like comparing nothing to almost nothing. NWSL games on CBS average 490,000 viewers. That is god-awful. I looked through several days of ratings on CBS to see if anything else drew this level of shit ratings. I couldn't find a show under 2 million viewers. This league does not belong on broadcast television. Hell, this league doesn't belong on national television. We already have one dump on national TV that no one is watching. We don't need another one. Credit to Jaylene Daniels for having the courage to stand up against this bullshit. We need to see more athletes doing this. If people do not start taking a stand, this country is going to be overrun with woke shit fucks. These people want absolute control over your life. The good news is, more and more of us normal people are starting to realize it. People are tired of having sexuality shoved in their face. People are tired of having mythical racism shoved in their face. But let me know what you think. Jaylene Daniels displays real courage and refuses to participate in a game that promotes the pride. Give me your thoughts. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.